In our newly created application, vPlay creates a whole bunch of files and folders for us that correspond to the basic scaffold for our app. And in this quick lecture, I'm just going to run through with a very light touch what each file and folder is responsible for. I don't expect you to remember any of this, but it's handy to have this lecture here so you can refer back to it in the future when, say, for example, you want to publish your Android app from vPlay and you need to understand where to get an icon from or where your app is maybe pulling its icons from and its assets, etc., etc. So open up the project we just created inside of vPlay and let's have a look. Right, let's have a look. The first thing that we have is this file called testapp.pro inside of the folder. And this contains a bunch of information that's relevant to your app. So for example, when we created our app, we created a product identifier, and this is where the application will pull it from in order to publish it, compile it, debug it, whatever it is. It also has a bunch of other properties, such as deployment folders, asset folders, where to look for the source of the asset folders, etc., etc. A lot of this file is kind of self-explanatory, and if it isn't, there are some pretty extensive notes that tell you what these things do and where to go and look for them inside of the vPlay documentation. So we're not going to mess with this right now because we're just looking at a general overview. The next thing we'll look at is this C++ folder. You'll notice there's a tiny icon that says C++. If we hit the main .c++, we'll see that this is actually the entry point to our application. What do I mean by entry point? Well, if you're not familiar with that, this is the thing that gets loaded that says, I want you to go over here and look at this file in order to begin the whole application. So what this does is it goes down here and looks for what's called a main QML file name. Now recall QML is the basic, the language or the, the structure that we're going to use in order to create our app. And it's going to go off and say, go to this folder QML and find the main file. And that's where you'll begin the whole application. So we'll get to that in a second. Over here, we have that QML folder. This top level QML folder with the caps isn't referenced in here. Rather, it's this QML folder in the lowercase below it. And that QML folder contains main.qml, which we already had open at the start of our app. Now, this is your first introduction to QML. It starts with an object called an app. This just defines that this is an application. It goes on to say inside of that application, there is a navigation stack. All a navigation stack does is allow you to move back and forth between pages of your app. And then it says in that nav stack, let's have a page and let's give it a title and let's give it an image. And we'll cover those more in depth as we carry on. So this is the entry point to the app where we're making the app itself, the navigation and the page. And it's really that simple. This actually is quite a small amount of code for doing all of the above. If you were doing this natively with iOS and Xcode or Android Studio in Java or Kotlin, then this would be quite a lot more verbose than it is here. So vPlay does quite a good job of abstracting away that complexity. Then below this, we have this folder called Other Files. Now, what's in here? Well, we have a folder called Android, and we have a, a file called Android Manifest. All a manifest is, is a file that has a, a bunch of properties that your Android app needs to know about. So it needs to know what's the minimum version that it will run on and what's the target. So the target is simply saying, I'm going to take the Android 8 SDK, Software Development Kit, and I'm going to compile this whole application to run on 8, but I'm going to make it compatible with the lowest level Android 4.1, which has an API number of 16, because Android likes to number its APIs as you see there. There's a bunch of other stuff, the application name, etc., etc. We won't cover that in any more depth. And then we have a build.gradle file, which lays out how to actually 
build your Android application. It's pretty rare that you'll actually touch that, except in rare cases. Now, below that, we have an Assets folder. And inside there, we have an image, the VPlay logo, although this might have changed if it's gone through its rebrand. That Assets folder gets referenced by, uh, I forget which file it was. Maybe you guys can remember that. I think it was uh, main.cpp, but I could be wrong. But anyway, if you've referenced it, then when you build something for Android or iOS or whatever platform, it'll go and grab all the assets from that folder by default. We have an iOS folder, and inside there we have a property list, a plist file. And a plist file is pretty much the same, for the most part, as the Android manifest file. It just has a bunch of stuff, a bunch of keys and values. So things like, is the status bar hidden on UI? True, yes, it is hidden. And what else have we got here? UI requires the full screen. So do we need to use the entirety of the screen? And that currently is set to true. Just basic stuff like that. Now, don't worry about all of this stuff. You'll get to understand these as you build more and more apps and they'll become second nature. And then we have for the Mac. And we have this little icons file, which is obviously a very pixelated icons. So that would be for Mac. And we have a QML folder, which contains a config.json. And that contains your app identifier, the title of the app, the orientation, so portrait, landscape, or auto, pick it up automatically. Version codes, you increase that by one each time you submit an update of your app to the App Store. And the version name, which is what the end user will see and what you will use when you receive say, a report of a crash on a device, it'll say crash happened on version name 1.0.1, .1, or it might give you the version code depending on which platform you're using. And it also has a stage variable saying we're currently at the test stage. At least I believe that's what that's for. Okay, so that's the basic files and folders. Now, if we ignore the other files folder, which we can safely do pretty much for the majority of our development time here, You'll notice all we have is a main.cpp that we're not going to touch because this says go over to main.qml. And then outside of that, the only other thing we can touch is a main.qml. So basically, we have one file and we have 25 lines of code, including five lines of comments that allow us to define an app, a nav stack, a page and various elements in that page. The image, of course, is pulling, remember, from that assets folder. So nice and compact, and that is basically what all the files and folders are there to do.